I've talked a lot about things that the Indians built 5,000 years ago. These Indians lived off the buffalo. Buffalo provided with them food, provided them with material for tools, the bones, and provided them with hides for clothing and shelter. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about the hunting of buffalo. The Indians took certain rocks, certain stones as sacred. And in this area of the Majorville Sun Temple, there are fossil baculites. Oh, I don't know, 60 million years ago, some long time ago. And a segment of a fossilized baculite, if you stand it on the four little projections from it, the Indians thought that looked like a tiny buffalo. And so they called those buffalo stones. And there is a legend about buffalo stones, about how a woman out looking for, I don't know, something when the tribe was hungry, came across this stone and the stone spoke to her and said, if you take me back home and let the tribes listen to me, I will tell you how to get buffalo. So these Buffalo stones have the reputation of attracting buffalo. The Blackfoot word for a buffalo stone is iniskim. So I'm going to talk a little bit about where they found iniskim and how some of them trapped buffalo to slow them down, to kill them, eat them, use their remains. We've been studying this site for since 1980, so this is 37 years now, and we're still making discoveries there. One of the peculiar things is there are stones, directional stones, long narrow stones. Some of them are actually like square in cross section and they're set on their edge so that they have a sharp edge going in a direction, and I call those knife edge stones. Well, some of these stones point north-south and some point east-west. Some of them point at some angle that doesn't seem to make any sense. And so I wondered about these. I've followed some of these around over, over hills and dales and have never uh, come to any good conclusion about what they mean. But in the last year, with the availability of Google Earth, and Google Earth has a, a ruler on it where you can bring in the ruler and then put a click or make, put a yellow dot on the Google Earth plan of the ground, and then you can move your cursor, and it will draw a yellow line. It will tell you the length of the line and the direction of the line to a hundredth of a degree. Well, this is incredible. So I extended my archaeology studies. So I started to investigate some of these directional rocks. If you stand a directional rock and look at a horizon, it's all hills and dales. So you can see maybe a kilometer or maybe only 500 meters, and there seemed to be nothing there. And so that, the first hundred times I did this kind of stuff, it just didn't lead to any conclusion. So I decided recently with this Google Earth to just take that direction and move it to the river and see what I find. Well, I'm going to talk about four of those directional rocks and see what we found by moving along that direction. G64 is just the, the GPS coordinate recording number. This is in my list of 450 GPS coordinate sets of coordinates. This is G64. There is a north-south and an east-west. The east-west is another story. So I'm going to talk about the, the, the north-south one. If you follow with the 
if with the G, with the Google Earth ruler, 0, 0.0 degrees north, you come to a gully 200 meters long that goes steeply down to the river where, the, where there's a, a curve of the river like that, the current is chewing away at the cliff edge, at the base of the cliff. And when it's undercut enough, another layer of the cliff falls down. Well, any fossils that are in that layer of earth go down with it. So this is a good place to go and find fossils. Baculites are fossils. So this is where they find an ischine. So there's a rock here, five kilometers away. That's a long way. You over here, over there, over here, and then you find, find this little gully that goes down to an ischine. 48 is another north-south rock, and if you go straight north, 0, 0.0, you come to a cairn. It's not marked here, but it'll be marked on another graph I will show you. And just on the other side of that cairn is the beginning of a gully that if you follow it along, it bends and it comes to exactly the same in this game collecting place. This is another rock. This is about a two or three ton rock pointing 32 degrees. So if you use Google Earth to draw the line till you get to a river. It goes over hills and down, but you finally get to the river. Again, it's about a 300 meter long gully going 32 degrees. You don't have to change direction to the river. And the, the river is curved that way. So this is another steep cliff where it's continually eroding and falling down, taking the baculites with it. And over here is another rock, the Sun Cairn, Sun Cairn ring is here. So relative to the Sun Cairn ring, you should see the positions of these things. Well, this is 36 degrees. And if you go 36 degrees from that one, you get to about a 400 meter long gully that goes down. Again, it's the same curve of the river. So all the steep banks about 200 feet high, well, about 100, well, 90 meters high, 80 meters, all along here, the same bank. So I've marked with a white ring where these baculate collecting places are from these four rocks. This colored zone here is what I'm going to wind up saying it needs protection. The government needs to protect this land. It hasn't yet. Well, let's follow one of those lines only, just to give you the idea. This is line 48. This is the north-south rock. This is a whole other story. The east-west one leads to a lot of stuff across the river, about five kilometers away. But this is where we start with the north, north rock line. This is 48 prime, 48 double prime. If we stand east of it and look west, this is what they look like on the ground. That's the north-south rock. This is east-west rock coming this way. And the GPS was halfway in between them, six meters apart. Show you what the Google Earth line looks like. Here's 48, come 0, 0.0 degrees north, you come to this cairn. It's not a really big cairn, but it's on the crest of a knoll, so it's easy to see. And just the other side of the knoll is the beginning of this valley, the, the white dashes follow that, that gully. And this is the Niskin collection place I pointed out before. And just on this bank of the gully is a cairn, but there's also the biggest chunk of white quartz I have seen on this site. White quartz is a sacred rock. In Irish, it's called a sunstone. Around the world, white quartz is a sacred, taken as a sacred stone. 
And there's another thing along this gully on the edge of it. It's about a two-ton red granite rubbing stone. Buffalo rubbing on that for many, many thousands of years have polished it. I mean, it's, it's, all, it's got a glaze. It's not just like smooth polish. The oil from the hide, I guess, has actually glazed the granite. So this is a place that was known and, and marked by people as something special. Take a look at this zoom in on the Google Earth. This is the, the, where the valley is wandering to the west. And this is the north part. And this is the one that came straight north from the first thing I pointed out, NG64. So two of these directional rocks wind up at this same point of the river. And this is all this, the, the dirt that's fallen down and uh, accumulated over the thousands of years. And a lot of it gets washed downstream. This is flowing that way. But this is the Aniskian collecting area. This is all steep cliff here. So there's the cairn and the piece of white uh, quartz could be that. This is the polished rubbing stone. And this is on a, a steep bank. The dark shadow means that there's a steep slope there, a steep slope here. Well, people used to talk about buffalo jumps. You drive the buffalo from the plains to the steep banks of the river and they would fall over the steep bank, break their legs, and make them easy to kill. But this pair of rocks, 48 prime and double prime, are about 200 meter, 200, about two kilometers from the river, two or three kilometers west of the river. About 200 meters away, there's this great big slough. It's just a special slough because look at the shape of this part of the slough. It looks like buffalo horns. So I saw this first in Google Earth because it looks darker in Google Earth. This is from, from an aerial photograph that we made. So that looked like something having to do with buffalo. So I took our aerial survey and zoomed in to see if there's any, a buffalo drive line. A buffalo drive line is cairns on either side of, a, it doesn't have to be a very deep gully, but cairns on either side of a, of a, of a slight depression where men could stand and wave things. And if you have a stampeding buffalo herd, by guiding them, scaring them from either direction, you can get them to go into something that will trap them, either fall over a cliff and break their legs, or go into a muddy slough where the walk ground is, is soft and they sink in and they can't move fast and so they're easy to kill. Well, when I zoomed in, there are dozens of cairns on either side of this draw or whatever. This is lowland coming in. So that's a drive line. And so that's the buffalo trap. And it's a buffalo trap that has the shape of a buffalo head up here. And I'm wondering, this looks natural. I'm wondering whether they didn't dig this other one to make it just look like another horn. I don't know. But it certainly fits the story of a buffalo trap. Well, These are the four lines that I showed you. This is the one I talked about. The slough with the buffalo head is here. But I mentioned that all of this stuff is something rec my, uh, recommended in my book, uh, Canada's Stonehenge and the second edition Hidden Stonehenge. This Sun Temple is the key to Stonehenge in England, and this is why the publishers 
made these strange titles, Canada Stonehenge and, and Hidden Stonehenge, to refer to this sun temple. But all of this stuff, all these banks, and all these thousands and thousands of stone artifacts refer to calendars and many other things, like buffalo traps and so on. So they have to be preserved. And so what I'm trying to do is to get the Alberta government to protect these areas. But now I've extended it from the four square miles that I asked them in about 1985 to protect. And they said, no, we've given you a quarter square mile. That's all you're going to get. And it's still all we've got. But now, instead of protecting the four, I'm saying they need to protect 24. It includes all of these banks. Maybe in 10 or 15 years, they'll do it. Maybe you can help.